here's another video uh, and thanks to one of the video owners for lending me her uh, site for for a very good point about UX design basically the user experience here so uh, I know for a fact after more than 2,000 served sites of, of BD um, that a lot of you your members have this typical issue they come to their contact details form and when they get to, to the location instead of clicking here just in case on your particular case this most likely says type your address here or 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 you know search your address here uh 350 new york something 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 i forgot what it says you can change the text here uh by going to go up here uh going to settings text label and literally searching for let me go there so you can actually see it but i'm gonna type the 350 or well actually i'm gonna type whatever the placeholder this is called a placeholder whatever the placeholder says so type your full location in this field so i'm going to type most of that here so type your full location blah 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 okay if you remove well by default there was something else here but one of the things on one of my meetings with the owner of this we changed this to this so it would make more sense into where the members are supposed to be typing so let me start right there so the default message is not clear, at least not clear enough for a lot of people. And instead of them actually clicking here and start typing, you know, whatever, they actually go down here where we would start this video. This video is to address the human behavior of basically instead of clicking here, they actually click down here. So there's two ways of handling this. The one that I um, basically promoted to the owner of this site, or at least the first one that I promoted to the site, is to make these fields read-only. Making them read-only would force, would force, and there's there's a difference between forcing somebody to to do something and guiding them to do something. So it would force the member to actually go up here because it's the only field that they would have left. So if you want to make these fields read only, what you do is on the form, on the contact details form, uh, let's go to one specific field, for example. Let's go to um, zip code. Uh, that field you would add here with, where it says additional field CSS class, you add the read only factor, I mean class. So let's add a read only to city, to city, okay? Let's put it there. Uh, read only here, bum, 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 bum. and there we go. Okay. We refresh, and you're gonna see that a new the city is gonna show similar to the postal code because they're read only. This is good. This is a good way of enforcing that they actually go up here. Because when you actually put some information here on Miami, let's put it like this, it will still auto fill the fields even if they're uh, uh, read only. Uh, but if you have a specific theme that makes it look like this, it just looks bad. Like it's it's hard to read what the value says there. So what you can do a workaround for that is here you go to settings design settings custom css head and you just add the read only because it's a the class that we're adding there and we're going to add two properties to it one is the background color so we're going to make it white again and just in case uh the default css code will be the overwrite this we're going to put an important in there and then two we enforce the black of it the, the, the black color, I mean, you can change them to whatever other colors you want, okay? But it's just to make it look more of the same that you had there. Uh, so let's do the same Miami there. We do it like this, and you can see that now they're black. It's more like a light gray or something, this. Um, but you can play around with the colors, okay? Uh, it might be light gray. So if you want to put light gray here, you can literally say light gray. We save it, come here, we refresh, let's do the Miami thingamajig there, 
And holy crap, sound like great. Well, anyway, you get you get the the point. You can play around with the colors until you, you match that. One. Let me just inspect here and we can see the actual color that that's supposed to have computed the color is okay so it's like a it's like a gray it's like a gray so we're going to use that specific one here too maybe it's not light gray but just gray if that doesn't work then we just we can just put that rgb85 there okay put it like that there we go uh yeah. oh yeah okay it was that one. Well, this one is too light, but it looks like it's that one. Still, if you want to put the RGB um, one, there's no problem. You just do RGB 80, 81, 86, 85, 86, 86. You save it. You refresh. That's all. there and there you go now you got the same one and you don't actually notice which ones are read only so if i click on this one nothing happens if i click on this one i can actually change it um and even if you say this automatically assign based on the location you know on your in the input above the map people don't even read this so you want to avoid the human factor the on the ux part of the um work that you do for the site and if you're a developer, you also want to offer a better UX. So this is one option, enforcing it. The second one is an idea that I came up with while I was doing the, the meeting with the owner of this site. And the idea is for you to not enforce it, but to guide the user. And how do we guide them? So what we want to do is if they click on any of the fields that we do not want them to be changing, we want to change the focus from here to here. So if they're about to type this, for example, if they click here, it immediately goes here and they end up pasting that there. And they're like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, sure, it's this one. Yeah, yeah, okay, there we go. Oh, thank you. So how do we do that? It's almost the same thing. So here we, we, we were making this um, read-only. Now we're, what we're going to do is we're going to add a new class. It's a made-up class. We're going to call it uh, not touchy. Not touchy, don't touch me there. So we're gonna call this one not touchy. And let's let's add another one so you know that it's, it applies for multiple ones, not touchy. And let me just close this here. And on the same place, again, settings, design settings, custom CSS head, on the additional footer code, we're gonna try to put as, you know, you know what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to minimize the amount of things that you gotta actually gotta type. I'll, I'll eventually put this on the Facebook group so you guys can just copy paste this here. But do know that the idea here is for you to be able to, to have flexibility, to be able to use this new code that I'm about to put here in multiple ways in behavior. So right now I'll be showing you one case, but you can actually use it for multiple cases. So. Let's just do this. Uh, we want to, uh, what was it? Not touchy. Okay, so we want to grab all the not touchy fields. Actually, let me just save this. If I don't save it, then we want to grab all the not touchy fields, which are on that specific page. Um, and let's just put them here. Input, focus list. And we're going to say this variable, it's going to, Grab all the not touchies because they don't want to get it touched. Not touchy. Hey, dude, not touchy. Okay. And then what do we want to do? We want to say, well, for each one that has this, we want to assign an event, a triggering event. If you click them, move the cursor from them to this one. Okay. In, in order for me to do that, I also got to. Come here and see what the name. Okay, so it's an ID. Okay, let's just grab that there. Um, let me just put this here, the ID, so we can keep it there, so I don't forget. And we want to say, okay, for each one of these ones that gets found found there, because this is going to grab all the fields, all the input fields, well, not input, anything that has the class no touchy. And then we actually want to say, if you click me, focus on the on 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 
on the input field on top of the map. And when I say any field, I mean it could be an input field, it could be this label here, it could be here, it could be there, it could be that link, it could be this thing. Like if you click there, it will go here. If they click the map, it will go here. If they click somewhere in here, it will go here. It's it's whatever you want. I'm I'm just trying to break or make you think outside the box because on BD there's there's too many things that you can do, but people are used to are used to only what BD offers. So that's so wrong. You're losing basically 95% of the things that you're really able to do on the platform. So I'm just showing you a little bit of things here that you can do. So, okay, we're going to type this one here and uh, input focus list. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to um, go over each of the items here. So if you're a developer, you know that I'm about to type for each. Uh, we're going to run the function. Let's assign the function the, I don't know, touchy, and let's put it like this. No, touchy element. Okay, and obviously the second one is the index. This is part of the JavaScript. You don't have to worry about this as a owner of the site. You're just going to be copying this code. That's it's pretty much it. Uh, let's open that function. Let me just drop this thing like really down here because there's a lot of things that we're going to be doing here. So here on the, okay, we got the, for each, we're going to run the function. That's going to have each of the items that we need to process and, you know, the index, that's normal. Uh, touchy element, not touchy element. We're going to add an event listener. If you're a developer, you already knew that I was about to do this. And what do we want to do? We're, we want to handle the focus. So every time these elements get focused, because we're targeting uh, input elements, we want to run specific function that's going to be adding um, this, the, the, the triggering, the actual triggering. So we're going to do a query selector. Um, and it's, uh, this was an ID. Yeah, that's what's an that's an ID. And once we selected that one, because it's the only one, and that's why I use query selector in, instead of query selector all, then we're going to focus on it. Okay, in theory, this should work. Uh, let's just organize everything here. So let me tab that properly. It's four, four tabs. There we go. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Let me see. Let me. Let me close this here. Uh, yep, that closes there. And this one closes here too. Let me do it like this. Actually, this will go like this. Um, boom, yep, we're reading each one. We're documenting, adding the event selector there. Applying this. I think we're done. Um, yeah, so, yeah, we're done. I, yeah, you see, we selected them for each one. We're adding the event listener. And then every time we add the event listener, we're attaching this, this specific code here. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's test this. We come here. We, I think we did it to address one and address two. So if I come here and I'm about to type Miami here, I click there. There we go. See? And I start typing up there. If I click here, I still focus on the, the one at the top. The good thing about changing the focus like that, if, if, if it's, uh, it's that if I scroll all the way down here and I click, it moves the screen to the focus item. So I don't get lost. So you also gain that. Okay, so I'm like down here. Let me click here and I type typing something. Like uh, 1453 Devereux Avenue, Philadelphia. There we go, where I used to live. Um, and th that's it. So now you have one way of doing it. And forcing them to use only this one or guiding them in using that one. So if I were to, like, they want to type the postal code or something, there's specific sites that actually do it like that, that, that they, don't, they care more um about the the postal code so let's save this one we just remove the um 
free only. So now I should be able to click on it. And let's just refresh here. And maybe I'm, I want to type 33 or 31, 90210 or something. If I click there, see, I'm clicking here and the focus is up there. So again, I'm going to put it like this. If I click on postal code, the focus is going to go up here. I click there, 90210. See? So this is a friendlier way of guiding them to the proper field that they're supposed to be clicking on. This is not limited to just this because you can literally create another type of class that focuses on another type of field. Um, for example, you have a select somewhere and if they click here, here you want to open that select or you say whatever, okay? You wanna, you wanna change the behavior. So you're not limited to just the map, but it's very useful for the map because now you can be more sure that people are gonna be putting the proper uh, information there because if you don't, on your backend, members will not be geocoded when they save the contact details form. Like if they fill the address here at city state, that's not geocoding them. The only way that they can get properly geocoded is if they type the information here. So you'll end up fixing two issues. Proper geocode, so this on the search results, they actually get mapped and, and, and searched properly when using a location. And two, the public profile gets fixed and they actually get geocoded properly with latitude and longitude and you actually get the proper information in the database. So it's all the same procedure there, not just the searching one. So here's the code, just in case you go the read-only way for, for those that want to do it like that, there you go too. I hope this video helps you and thank you to uh, Resonate Life uh, for the opportunity of doing this video.